it's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It, and I Feel Fine. The bet noir of the alternative news circuit. You're too stupid to know what that word means. Whoa, what the fuck, Amy? Where's this hostility coming from? Dumbass. When I talk, people listen. Yeah, no fucking shit. You're an NPR. Keep talking and I will sue your ass for slander. But I thought you were a fan of the show. Hmm, she always seems so nice. Anyway, I am your host, Stimulator, and as the teeming pile of pissed off messages in my inbox can attest, me and my crew of submedia slaves recently took a month and a half long hiatus from the guerrilla task of producing bi weekly riot porn mashups to pay a brief visit to our comrades at the Onestone camp, followed by some well needed RR. But while seeping mojitos in the balmy summertime sun has been a welcome change to the seemingly endless frozen fucking hellscape, of winter here in Canada, in many other parts of the world, this summer has been a biblical clusterfuck of droughts, natural disasters, and record-breaking heat waves that have climate experts admitting that shit's even more fucked than they previously thought. Only collapse of civilization prevents runaway climate change. Well, as it turns out, now we know that collapse of industrial civilization leads to abrupt climate change as well. So it's a double bind. We either turn off the heat engine uh, which causes a very abrupt rise in global average temperature in a matter of a few days. Or we keep the heat engine going and it causes that same rise in temperature in a few years. With more and more scientists dropping their language of tough but necessary reforms in favor of full-scale fucking nihilism. He believes in nothing. He believes in nothing, Lebowski, nothing. On July 20th, world-renowned climatologist James Hansen co-authored a report on a newly discovered feedback loop off the coast of Antarctica, which concluded that sea levels could rise 10 fucking times faster than previously expected, up to 10 feet by 2065. Coastal cities would become dysfunctional. Parts of the city would still be above water. We would lose all the coastal cities in the world. Today is forecast for you, hot! Melting polar ice sheets and warming ocean temperatures are also wreaking serious fucking havoc on marine life, leading to historically unprecedented species migrations, most dramatically illustrated by the 35 fucking thousand walruses that scientists recently noticed gangsta chilling of the coast of Alaska. And shit's not going much better on dry land. Take California, for instance, where the worst drought in over a thousand fucking years has transformed much of the state into a barren wasteland decimating food productions and creating the ideal conditions for fast-moving and uncontrollable wildfires. Oh, you could feel the flames. It was hot. It was like you were locked in a sauna. In my homeland of Borique, aka Puerto Rico, climate change added insult to injury as the economically depressed U.S. colony has been hit with a mega drought. Water levels are so low that the government has been instituting water rationing on almost the entire population. It's also been brutal as fuck in India and Pakistan, where record-breaking heat waves have claimed over 4,000 lives to dehydration and heat stroke. Meanwhile, over in Iraq, peeps suffered through a week and a half of sustained 50-plus degree weather in July and August. That's over 122 degrees Fahrenheit. While facing electricity shortages that have helped spark massive protests against government corruption. And last but not least, earlier this month in the Iranian city of Bandar e Mashar, it reached a fucking insane 73 degrees Celsius or 165 degrees Fahrenheit on the heat index, the second highest temperature ever recorded anywhere on Earth. It's hot, damn hot, real hot. Hot as this is by shorts, I can cook things in it. Shit has also been heating up in Turkey, metaphorically speaking, following the tragic July 20th suicide bombing in Surak which targeted an international brigade of communist and anarchist youth that were preparing to cross into Rojava to bring toys to the region's war-plagued children and aid in the reconstruction of Kobani, while this disgusting and cowardly act was ultimately claimed by the fascist fucking zealots of the so-called Islamic State, or ISIS. If you want the killing to stop, you give us $10 million, change your name to Muhammad, and kill Justin Bieber. Kurdish militants were quick to point much of the blame at Turkey's shit-eating president Tayyip Erdogan, 
who had long been backing up ISIS in their fight against the Syrian and Kurdish defense forces of the YPG and the YPJ. The night of the bombing, protests erupted in major cities across Turkey, with minor clashes taking place across several neighborhoods in Istanbul. Despite an intense government clampdown on social media, these clashes intensified over the next 24 hours, and by nightfall on July 21st, armed demonstrations and Molotov attacks were taking place in Istanbul and cities across the country's Kurdish southeast. The next day, things ramped up further, with the execution of two Turkish police officers, who Kurdish militants claim have been complicit in the Suruk bombing. Responding to this growing unrest, on July 23rd, Erdogan formally announced the launching of Turkey's very own war on terror. But it quickly became apparent that the main target of this war wasn't going to be ISIS, but members of the Kurdistan's Workers' Party, or PKK. Erdogan's ideas and actions are not fair. He's in the process of organizing a massacre. And a massacre of Suruk was just one example.